Ahoy, wonders, and welcome back to the table. I'm used to going to the map. I'm, 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 I'm lost. It's okay. I just, I just got... Well, that works too. The one button system works just as well. Ah! Ah! You blinked! I stopped, exi I stopped existing for a moment. <laughs> Ahoy, wonders, and welcome back to the table. It's been, it's been a couple of weeks, so... It uh, has. We have uh, a little, uh, little bit of a rocky little, little situation. A little bit of a recap after we murdered... Di di just disappeared again from reality. Ahoy, wonders, welcome back to the table. Ahoy, wonders, <laughs> welcome back! To the table. Oh my God, we're seeing the fucking uh, we're 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 looking at the Fae with no faces again. Yeah, have I have I? Oh it, God. Can I see the Can I see the curvature of the uh, black hole? <laughs> no, because it's flat. Oh, there's no curve. Not anymore. It's, it's like, like it's like an inverse cone. It's like that post you showed me where it was like the NASA logo and it says it's round. We, we checked. checked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Seal of approval. So, so we killed a we killed a giant megapede. Yes, uh, the funglets had given Chromagill mostly uh, a small task for unfortunately murdering one of their own in a rage from the rageapede poison. It happens. Uh, they had asked you. They had asked Chromagill that he would to kill the megapede to get his possessions back. Uh, you guys agreed to help him out on that quest. Yep. Uh, during that time, uh, your NPC companions, uh, you don't know what happened to Valtara when she was bit by the rage, when she was, uh, and took the rage of Pete venom. Uh, you found her. She wasn't in very good shape, so Mecha and uh, Devil Grin stood behind while you guys took care of the Megapede uh, to make sure that Valtara doesn't get ambushed or killed. Yeah, that was a good call. Uh, at this point, you guys have just completed your task in uh, killing the, me uh, the Megapede. And a whole bunch of subset of like little add-on ra uh, rage of peats on the side as well. So now the body lays before you. It has eaten some of your equipment. Uh, you probably can. Yeah, wake, wake. The first thing Wake that. was gonna do was just gonna go ahead and try to carve through this thing. And if that fails, just you know, Kratos crawl into Hydra's mouth and find it. Okay, uh, I need you to roll me a survival check. Sure. Sixty survival. seconds. <laughs> do, 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 do. Survival check is a, it's a plus six. Fifteen. Which is funny enough you say that, though, because apparently it actually says in the book in Cobalt Press, uh, you have up to 24 hours to get anything that has been eaten out of its gut before it digests. That's how big know. it is. Which in D&D &D time is 60 seconds. Yeah. I was just... I was <laughs> Jesus. Just, I was about to say, I was just making a Monster that, Hunter is reference. That, is that on fucking haste? I, I guess. <laughs> uh, what was the number again? I apologize. Uh, sorry, that was a 15. 15? Okay, well, carving this thing is no issue. Ugh. <sighs> <sighs> You kind of gauge, like, based on how much time has passed and how far this thing possibly could have eaten your equipment, you kind of gauge, like, it's probably, like, maybe five feet down where the gullet should be at this point. Uh, but carving into it, you, you, you take your knife and you start carving into it. However, you kind of are taken aback by this as you expect blood. It's actually spewing out molten silver. Ow. Ow. You, you're Ow. not taking any damage because you saw oh. it. You could have carved Ooh. You carved it out, and you saw it coming out, so you jumped out of the way just in time. So getting into this thing, you're making, you're making progress. It's just that your progress is now halted because this thing eats ore. And <laughs> basically, based on how you just saw this, it heats the ore in its mouth somehow and then uh, digests it, or either the digestive juices are making it molten. It's a liquid diet. Yeah. It's like soup. Uh, so if anybody has anything, any weapons they want silvered, now is a good time. Um, yeah, you're going to have to figure out how to get through. <laughs> like, you're going to have to figure out how to get through all this molten silver that it's exhuming out of it before you can get to your gear. Well, I'm going to use Ghoul, which has a longer blade. Okay. Uh, so you're going to try and, like, pry into this thing? Oh, you're trying to cut into yeah, it. Yeah, basically but... I just want to, like, you know, practice those samurai skills. I was just, you know, I learned literally, <laughs> like... I guess but, six hours ago. Yeah, now. six hours ago, like from Devil Grin's teachings. Ooh. Ah! <laughs> Roll me an athletics check with disadvantage. That's how that weapon works, anyway. Not terrible. That is acrobat or athletics. You said right? Yes, please. All right, that is a uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Roll that one d twenty for you, real quick. Okay, not bad. Uh. You basically carve where the opening is already. The, the blade goes by fast enough that it's not uh, halted or gets stunted by the uh, molten lava. Uh, lava. Molten ore. The molten ore. 
and you make the you make the or uh, the hole bigger in the gap in the gap, and it opens up, uh, and it starts spilling out a little bit of some chunks of flesh and what looks like an indentation of some kind of weapon, kind of like oozing out of it as well. But it's all in completely drenched in uh, molten silver. All right, I'm just gonna take my uh, trident and just kind of like fork it out. Just. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> All right, well, it's out, but it's on the floor right now, still covered in that molten ore. Yeah, I'm just getting it somewhere where it can, like, drain properly. Better if I can, like, hook it and, like, use the prongs of the trident to, like, lift it up and okay. shake some of the uh, residue off. I will grant you either a acrobatics or a survival check of your, cho- uh, of your choosing. Uh, acrobatics is plus one stronger. It's uh, 17. 17? You're pretty much now like using the tip of the other blade to keep this thing up on top of a rock, and it's now letting the molten ore ooze off it. <sighs> uh, your your weapon looks a little banged up, but no worse for wear. Uh, good thing it was magical. Let's see if we can find. Uh, let's see, I think I gave Chromagill a hand axe that also got. Oh eaten, yeah, the hand axe. That, yeah. that was well. not magical, so I'm guessing it's pretty bad right now. Gonna have but... to roll me another survival check on that All one. All right, taking a look. Uh, that's another 15. Uh, you see some really eroded aged wood seep out. Rip hand axe. Chromagill saunters over, uh, nursing a pretty beaten up looking mushroom body, and just kind of, <laughs> just kind of holding himself, but... Holding a pretty sick mushroom stick. <laughs> but got this big stick. Should I provide evidence that we've killed this thing? Should I take its head back to these people, maybe, for proof? I mean, it, there's got to be something on here that's uh, indicative of it without being... I'm not really sure where the head begins and anything else ends, actually. Kind of looks up... Uh, well, it's you You can see the... Like, it's not like it's a giant worm. You can see the centipede head. Oh. It do, does have a distinct It has head. a distinct head. It's just that its mouth opens up like a predator jaw. So it's like... Predator flaps, then the mouth behind the flap. And the rest of it is a centipede head. So if we take it like a shark and just take its jaw, should be pretty good. All right. I'm going to go up and try and do that. Would that be a survival, survival check, check. To, to kind of pull off a specific part? With, how are you doing so with what weapon? <laughs> <laughs> are you doing oh, this man. with your bare hands? I hadn't, I hadn't considered that. Uh, I mean, you are a siege weapon. I am a siege weapon, yes. But uh, that's but not that, exactly precision. Uh, sur- sur- survival's more intricate figuring out how things work, whereas yeah. athletics is just smash until it opens. Uh... You know what? You you present a good point. They had removed a lot of my things, so he's just going to try and pull some of its jaw off. To, Athletics. Uh, to uh to get that. All right. Just rip that bad boy off. Uh, that is a twenty-one. <laughs> well, something moved, but apparently, from what you're grabbing, it feels stiff. Chroma Gill. Uh, you guys God watch as Chromagill is holding up, holding, the, apparently the creature's face kind of like is now stuck in rigor mortis. He actually pulled the entire head off. Hmm. Oh. Am I able to carry this or is it so big that it's it'll heavy. be? It's pretty big. You're going to have to need two hands for that. Do you think you can protect me? I feel like this will be a very effective tr- uh, trophy to present. Yep, that'll, that'll work. Uh... Well, there's nothing else needed to protect you about at this point. This thing, like, you pretty much killed the giant big thing. Uh, okay, with this big uh, rageapede, me- mega rageapede head. Uh, <laughs> megapede head. Ooh. I'm going to see if I can just balance it on my cap in any way. See if I can ad- wear we can, it as an adornment. We can play such a good prank on everybody we left behind. Oh, no! The rageapede is here! <laughs> uh... Go ahead and either roll me a performance or an acrobatics check. All right, I don't have bonuses on either of those, so I'm gonna say this is performance. Uh, that's a 14. Uh, so you so you try putting it neck first on your head. That doesn't really work that well. It keeps sliding off. Apparently, you. Cracking this thing wasn't really all that smooth at the neck, but you're able to keep the rest of the body intact. Uh, however, you flip it around, 
open up it and keep and put its predator like mouth <laughs> and it latches onto the side of your head perfectly that it now adorn is adorned on you looking like it's eating you. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. <laughs> the mega feed is getting its revenge. That's horrifying. Yes, but at least it frees up my hands. You hear <laughs> devil you hear devil grin off to the side. We can still hear you. Oh, I I wasn't going to prank you. <laughs> No, we can still him, still hear him. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> well, we we've, we've solved the problem, but uh, don't be alarmed when you see me. I'll be okay. Very well. Starts heading back towards their direction. Okay. We should go. Uh, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So you guys see Devil Grin like take a stance as he knows you guys coming in, but then he like stands up, but then. Notices that you have a nice new hat on top of your head. <laughs> well, we've solved the Megapede problem, and I've brought a trophy along to prove it. How's Voltara? She's stable, but this is uh, Micha has told me that her medical equipment can only go so far. She needs proper rest and a proper bed. We are not too far away from Colas. We can probably take her there. I believe you have unfinished business with the Funglets, if that's what you have told us. Mm-hmm. They wanted me to... Ha to kill this beast in order to give me back my possessions. As I know the way to the brimstone dragon, I can take them to the closest inn. That works. Well, uh, how do we get there? <laughs> You're li literally just keep going down the tunnel. You're almost at the entrance of Colas. Oh, there you go. All right, we'll, uh, we'll meet you there after we settle things up with the Funglet tribe. Yes, we will see you. Uh, the, once again, we will meet you back at the brimstone dragon. Brimstone dragon. Assuming she got a big dose of the rage concoction these centipedes love to spew, uh, make sure she's sedated, I suppose. She Voltara, seems pretty sedated. Voltara would be a bad person to have enraged. You hear uh, a... <laughs> Meech is kind of like squirming her paws as Voltara has fallen on top of her asleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. She seems pretty out of it. Just want to make sure that rage doesn't kick in when, you know, it's only you guys around. See All right, we'll see you guys <laughs> at the end. <laughs> We've done our best to siphon most of the poison out of her. Okay, good. Just wanted to be sure we'd covered those bases. I'll take this. <laughs> Let's take those. this to the funglets. <laughs> I still feel dirty being in their debt. <laughs> well, let's go fix that up. <laughs> okay, so with that, uh, Micha and Devil Grin will take Voltar to the Brimstone Dragon to at least get some proper rest and set you guys up for a room. You're supposed to be meeting up with uh, Ulfdar, which is... Uh, the fella you met up uh, up on the services uh, cousin who owns the bar. <clears throat> All right. Uh, with that, Star owns the bar. Yes. Uh, I can, let me. Anyone want to roll? You know what? For flavor's sake, anyone want to roll an intelligence check? I will try. Go for it, Chroma Gill. Uh, twelve. Ulfdar Flickerfo. Ulfdar Flickerfo. You remember him, the one who owns the bar. <laughs> I yes, heard, I've heard the name. He's in, he's quite in favor with those who'd like to do a lot of mining. And definitely not those of the Geode Coalition. Keeping that in mind. <laughs> Thank you, head voice. That was Chromagill. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> My voice is always in your head. Sometimes it just sounds a little different. God can't see you. You're kind of underneath the earth. We're also looking for Daystar, the son of Wayland of the Spring Court. Hey. <laughs> when last we left our heroes, the recap is here. Don't sleep on it now. Just letting you know that that might be the oh God, that's his other new note recap. I have on this paper. Yeah, re recap. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Hey. Chromagill with the Chromagill's recap. recap. Fuck, that's really good. All right, that's going to be my afternoon that sounds like merch. talk show hour. <laughs> that sounds like some good merch ideas. <laughs> All right. Uh... All right, so you guys head back out the way you came. Uh, you actually are noticing that there are still some uh, centipedes that are, like, like they're in your peripheral vision. You can see them, like, skittling, uh, skittering about, but they're not attacking you. They're actually trying to find ways to escape. So you pretty much just killed the alpha of whatever all the centipedes were kind of, like... And I'm wearing his head. Yep, pretty much. Didn't realize centipedes had that sort of hierarchy and belief. Huh. At least these ones seem to. Hey, they they can tell when the when the big guy in the yard has been taken out. They don't mess with whoever hit him. Fair fair enough. 
I'm glad you're picking up on euphemisms. <laughs> it works! <laughs> Uh, so you guys head back outside, you're on the road, uh, you're pretty much on the road that leads you back over towards where the burning house is. By now, it's cinders. By now, there's nothing left of that house. The cart is still there and tipped over, uh, but that's probably gonna be, like, another ten minute walk from here. Chromagill is, unfortunately, the only person here who knows the proper way into the woods. Don't worry, the funglets were this way! Survival! Uh, fifteen. I remember mushroom, like I remember some mushroom. You remember the tip of it, it. yeah. You remember the edge of it, but you you kind of like have a basic idea of where it could be. Whereas Chromagill, on the other hand, he remembers the giant one, (laughs) the the giant sovereign of them sticking out in the distance. Like he looks up at a certain part of the ceiling, (laughs) and he's seeing like a very faint little bit of light, and that's the bioluminescent rim of the of the uh, Sovereign. Anyway, their Sovereign traded girth for height, which I don't know if you really want to do that. Anyway, there he is. <laughs> yeah, there is a 20-foot tall, 20-foot long mushroom up and touching the ceiling. Okay. Anyway, you can see why I respected him and his decisions, what with how tall he is. Yeah, it's, it's pretty damn tall. Behold, Funglets, I have paid mine debt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, after return, <laughs> you guys take a few minutes. You, know, you just threw it on the floor because you're not there just yet. But oh, oh. yeah, I thought we were there. I was, no, I was gonna say you're gonna take a walk over there. You finally find like you were using the, the uh, sovereign as, as a, a as a as waypoint, a basically. Yeah. <laughs> just, that so, motherfucker. So like 10, 15 minutes pass by of you guys walking through the woods. You are now entering a giant uh, bioluminescent mushroom field. <clears throat> There's no need for light sources here. Everything's lit up, though. Uh, for based on what you what Chromagill has told you that apparently these mushrooms are all alive, it's kind of weird considering that you pass by like at least five to seven mushrooms before reaching an opening, and they're about maybe seven to ten feet tall. So each of these could possibly be a micated. They're like trees. Don't let them hear you say that. Very different. Uh, you return to the small little uh, opening, which was pretty much like. The, the little gathering area where all the fungus were when you first awoke out of the side of the wall. Uh, you return, and now you can present your stuff if you wish. Behold! The trophy! That which you seek, the Megapede has been slain! Tongue rolls out. <laughs> Herald me, Funglets, as your new champion, as I have defeated your bane! Along with the help of my friends. Just just posing for Chromagill. <laughs> I just kind of have Both my you hand. roll a perception check. Have my hands just out just looking as around. in a very presenting. Huh? Natural wonders. Oh, man. Got a five. <laughs> Which is like, you guys are just picking your nose and scratching your ears. Funny, looking, you, funny enough, this is actually an appropriate role, but go ahead. You're looking in all of the directions and trying to figure out, like, is this really what's happening? You don't see anything. You just see mushrooms upon mushrooms, and there's so many of them, and they're so clustered together that it almost feels like there's, like, nothing happening at all until finally you, both of you, feel like, at the, at the napes of your neck, you feel like this weird, moist, almost breath beating down upon you. <sighs> Ew. You look up, there are bleeding uh, bleeding oozes of caps above you as there is a creature with a very somber and angry face looking down at you from the mushroom. Taking a grip on my weapon slowly. Not taking my <laughs> eyes off. What is this creature I'm staring at? Oh, it looks like a mycodid. It looks exactly like Chrome. It basically looks like what Chromega would be if he was way more pale and really, really tall. Is this uh? Oh, hello! Are you are you here to pick up? Hello, it is me. Wait, oh, hold on. (laughs) (laughs) Ah! It's everywhere. Hello, it is me, Slim Shady again. Slim Shady, hello. Hello, Ghost Fat. (laughs) I've brought the head of the Megapede. Also, my friends here. I present. (laughs) I present my friends, waiting to hear them describe them. Hi. Hello. This is Wake and Morgan. However, I'm sure there will be simpler to remember names for you. Wake legs and Morgan legs. Good. That works for me. Of course. This is getting boring. 
What happened? Not the word I would have used for it. Oh, there's Morgan. Kinda rude, Morgan. Uh, Hello. Oh God, there's more of them. That's Slim Hi. Shady. <laughs> this is Slim Shady. He is a bit of a sort sort of a go between. He's talking to us for the for the funglets. Well, now I need everyone to uh, roll me a wisdom save as you all hear a cacophony of hellos all around you. Oh God, a wisdom save. Oh, come on, will the real Slim Shady please stand up? Modified twenty for me. Uh, oh, dick. Oh, wisdom save. That one. And yeah, that one for old Morgan. 17 for Wake. Okay. Well, Chrome, I mean, uh, Morgan just woke up from his... Deep, deep possession. <laughs> yeah, from his deep possession. So a cacophony of hellos just hit him. <laughs> taking... <laughs> with all of this giving you a migraine for four points of psychic damage. Oh. Does that kill you? No. <laughs> I'm at 11 now. You have, oh, a sp- yeah. you have a split <laughs> headache. I forgot how li- Yeah, no one took a short rest. <laughs> nope. Nobody's taking, like, really any rest since oh, we've had much. Oh, 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 I wanted to drop my things off and get to call us before I rested. Oh, yes, well, thank you so much for defeating the Megapede. You're very welcome. I, I hope this, the Megapede trophy is a, is a, a pastime for your people to look at and adore. Well, to be frank with you, we kind of just wanted to test you. We didn't really want this thing dead. We just heard it was a human problem. And we figured that that's where you wanted to go. The main reason why we were so afraid of you was, uh, well, actually, uh, uh, Jerry Small over there, he's alive, actually. There's that dead body that you were looking at. It kind of just, like, molts and out pops another one. Oh, well, it's good to know your friend isn't dead i suppose yes we a- we actually asked you to do this because we were more worried about the other fellow that was walking with you oh the red fellow there's there's been more of them coming down here and they had a they had another person who if they if he looked at you you would actually like be banished somewhere we don't know where did uh, this person his eyes were they strange we didn't see the eyes, but we did notice that there was this weird marble-like gleam that came out from when he lifted a blindfold. It says he was followed around by some kind of creature that haunts his dreams. That hmm. sounds that sounds important. Um, do you have any other information on this individual? I don't, not so much that individual, but we. But you, I guess since you killed, why am I turning him into Morty? <laughs> what the fuck oh, happened? Oh man! Oh man! <laughs> This is the voice we're hearing in our heads. So yeah. He doesn't even have an excuse for it. God, this is it, how I think. Jesus, Jesus, this actually is. This, I, this I, is I, the voice that comes out when I think of voices. My God, oh. I, I pretty much just transformed this campaign into Trover Saves the World. <laughs> <laughs> I've been intrigued by that. I'm, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about trying that I one. I saw the it's, uh, commercial. It's, it's, it's something. It's something, <laughs> all right. I got the Oculus. I mean, you may as well. Oh, no, no, it's worth it. It's just, it's, it's, it's a trip. Uh... So you said he was traveling with uh, one of those, dr- dr- or the Drakai? Uh, well, we didn't know if it was the Drakai. Uh, is that what they call them? I don't know. I was asking God. <laughs> oh, okay. It's the very the dragony faced people. The red people. Well, the red people look more like devils. Oh, oh, oh! Traveling oh. with the tiefling. Tief? What's it? No. Oh, those? No. It was more than that. They weren't tieflings. They they were much more gout than that. They were bigger and more burlier, and they they looked like something that comes out from the the molten place way down just below the forest. Hmm. But they came from the <laughs> but they came from the surface. They're pretty much telling you that they look like creatures that are from the surface. They don't belong in Underhalem. They were traveling with this other person that was wearing a blindfold who looked like a drow. And every time he removed it, it his gaze would remove something from his sight. Well, that Don't sounds... A staring contest with that person. Gives me sort of a... When I have a concept Did you see where they went? Medusa? <laughs> yes, they they head down the road. Toward Callus. Yes. Oh, well, that's where that's, we're heading. That's in the direction we're going. How long ago was this? Do you have a concept of time? I actually wrote that down. <laughs> well, it took four sprouts of a spore for him to... <laughs> <laughs> Many nourishment cycles ago. Oh, God. <laughs> in a dog spore. 
Yep, a bunch. They tell you that a, a bunch of uh, red creatures accompanying a young man whose eyes shown a weird marble when he took a cloth <laughs> off his eyes. Uh, travel deeper into Underhollum. The young man has a strange ability that when he looks at something, anything that is a creature that stands before him vanishes. The boy and the red ones were last seen uh, heading towards uh, Colas, uh, though the forest is gazed because of the uh, the sovereign. He can actually see even further than Colas itself. He says that uh, a couple of cycles ago, unfortunately, they have no concept of what a cycle is. Yeah. Uh, that this boy and his companions were seen uh, just just exiting out the edge of the uh, bioluminescent forest, which is just a little bit deeper past Dimswell from what uh, Devil Grin has told you. So he says this happened four cycles ago? Yeah, uh, how many a couple of cycles okay. ago. They don't have no concept of time. They said a few cycles ago. Okay. Could mean 37 years. Oh, well, I was I was going to see if they had a number of cycles ago. This was. How many number of cycles ago did I leave to uh, kill the mega unle- feed? Un- well, I mean... Point you, zero, <laughs> zero, zero, you, could, zero two. you could ask them that. There's a way you could probably... Uh, dis- uh, gauge time if you ask them certain questions. Uh, with how recently I was charged with facing the, the Megapede, roughly how long between then and now versus how long between now? The dew has only dropped once. There are six dew drops every time <laughs> there is a cycle. Okay, so we've been well, one there's dew there's a tremor? Dro- so there was one... What? <laughs> <laughs> there was one dew drop since since I left, but six dew drops for a cycle, and it's been multiple cycles since you last saw the individual we're, we're seeking? At least maybe four or five cycles. Okay, well, so it, either way, our, our trail is cold, our but tra- it's not that cold. Our trail is getting cold at the very, very we least. We should probably go. I agree. Can, uh, we, the go? Can, we, have, uh, the can we have his stuff back? <laughs> yes, of course. Here you are. They drop it on Morgan. Uh, oh, thank you, Morgan. I'll take that. <laughs> Just goes over and grabs his things. So, uh, do you want to roll a uh, history check to see what, if you could properly gauge that? I'll try and uh, you do that. Do I get any sort of advantage being a fellow Mike in it? You know what? That's fair. I'll give you advantage on this roll. All right. Hey, I'll take that advantage with that nat 20. Woo! Nice. Uh, cycles apparently seem to be six uh, humanoid hours. Okay, so not that long. Maybe maybe a day, maybe a day and a half. Perhaps a day, a day to two days would be my range, I would estimate. What's a day? Oh God, we're still in range. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you guys never left at this point. (laughs) It's a surface dweller thing. Anyways, thank you so much for for your assistance. I apologize for any sort of confusion or panic me and my friends may have caused you. Well, it's quite all right. We were just worried that you might have been part of the Red People Group. Well, trust me. That is not us. Well, no. Well, they saw Devil Grin. That's why they thought. Right. Well, don't worry. Though we've traveled with perhaps uh, some some of his kin, we are we are not th- the group that has been causing you trouble. You said he was a dragonborn. What so- is this creature? Well, he's it's not th- quite a dragon. Th- not quite a person. It's a sophisticated dragon humanoid. They, they seem to be civilized if you speak with them, at least it's from kinda, what I've encountered. It's kind of like what I am to a person and a fish. Oh, you're, you're as if an elf and the things that swim around in Dimswell had some kind of relation. Yes. Sure. If an elf copulated with a shark, this is what would happen. <laughs> oh, God. Are you part drow? No, uh, that I'm aware of. They actually, no, you actually gate got a reaction out of some of the Mycanids uh, around here. The funglets are all looking at each other when the word drow was uh, was uttered. Do you have a problem with drow? Have they caused issues for your people? I don't think I've met one. No, it's, you've you've met someone who's close to one. Yeah. Like, Fre- uh, Frida has a little bit of it. She's a gray elf, but... There's a little bit of like drow in there somewhere. I spent like no time with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, you've yeah. seen he, he like you've her. seen drow before, and right, it's not uncommon. It's just that you've never interacted with one per se. They always wear sunglasses outside. That's that's weird. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, there's a very big bright orb in the sky for the people who live in. There's the There's a what? It's called the sun. It's where a lot of energy actually comes from for not only the planet but for many. All, all of them start wiggling and like. 
Whoa, should probably is... go. The trail is getting colder. Uh, he makes a good point. But to answer your question, uh, they tell you that something. Uh, they know what a drow is, and uh, there are drow that live in Colas. Uh, however, there is a kingdom that's on top of the mountain that they've heard of that has something to do with all the elves of the entire continent. They all live there, huh. but. Uh, they used to have some kind of connection to the Underdark, but a couple of hundreds of years ago, something really, really like weird happened, and all the drow went crazy. And now there's a ruined city somewhere beyond the uh, the caverns, just below uh, Dimswell. Huh. Well, wow. we'll try to keep an eye out for that, I suppose. Or, I mean, maybe it'll take. Maybe our journeys will take us there. Maybe they won't, but we'll keep an eye out regardless. Very possible. Anyway, we we should probably start following that divine heir or whatever we're looking for. This being this being from well beyond my understanding. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much for your for your assistance. They, okay. yeah, sure. <laughs> very well. Very well. Th- thank you for actually. You probably did something. I mean, <laughs> I I mean the megapede. Well, it's a, the, the, I'm, I'm turning into I like, I like that as a tagline. The natural wonders probably did something, right? <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for probably doing something. I mean, something. this doesn't have affect us, but I'm sure the people of Colas will find you appreciative of this sort of venture. Well, excellent. Either way, kind of gathers his things. I believe we'll be off now. They, they don't get out of your way as soon as you walk over. A- anyway, we, sh- we should be going, so I'll, I'll see you later. We, we, ha- we, uh, we have other jobs to do. You want to roll a uh, persuasion check? May, may, may we may we go? Oh no! Uh, with a four in persuasion. <laughs> they're they're oblivious to you asking what they want them to do. Hey, have you guys ever seen the sun? <laughs> I was about to create like just a ball of fire, man. Just... <laughs> Behold, he has brought a piece of the sun below. We need to take it deeper in. Please get out of our way. Careful. All right, everyone roll a wisdom save again as every fucking plant in this entire vicinity is shrieking in terror. Please. Great. Uh, eight. 21. God damn it. Another nat one. Natural wonders. That's way cold. It's, it's, Morgan, it's Morgan's hangover day, a tiny apparently. Ball of well, I rolled a four, so that's bad. Oh, low, okay. My head just explodes. <laughs> it's got a very big headache. Well, there's three voices in this. And you've head unfortunately failed as well, Grant. Yes. I had a feeling. Eight did not seem like a good roll here. Yeah, was, uh, like I guess I think Wake's curse. He constantly gets people into something that he just <laughs> avoids. He gets nine points of psychic damage. Okay. That's interesting. What happens when I drop below zero? Uh, you, you fall, fall unconscious. unconscious. You- ah! <laughs> Chromagill's <laughs> family guy flops. Chromagill's kind of falls prone. So you, wa- you uh, watch as... Uh, ta-da! You watch as every other fucking mushroom just like either sinks into the floor, finds refuge, or runs away. Wake! This, the Sovereign is leaning over looking at you, this this time now with anger. Wake in the name of all the turn that fucking thing off! <laughs> Turns into steam. Oh! How's Chroma... Damn it! I take out a healing potion. Good. <laughs> nope. Me I get pour him it up. onto one of Chromagill's spore openings. <laughs> uh, just blood through all my ears and nose. I think that's Help me uh, 2D4 pick him up. 2D4 plus 2? Yeah. yeah, 2D4 plus 2. He's about to wake up. He'll be fine. Oh. Mm. Nice. Turn into Marge for a second. Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Th- thank you, Wake. What happened? Oh, it just was crazy. They they didn't like the sun very much. Oh, yes. They live underground. I can imagine they'd probably be very frightened. However, it does look like the path has been cleared. They've, yep. all, they've all scurried away. Yep. You Problem much- solved. With, with, <laughs> with Chromagill now limping his way fucking down the path. Morgan, are you okay? You look like you're hurt too. I hand Morgan a healing potion as well. I will take you don't. That no, one. listen. But give that back to him. <laughs> give it back. You are God. <laughs> you're like, you're going to be going to the tavern soon. <laughs> so at this mm. point, 
uh, after like maybe an hour's worth of travel, after getting through that giant maze that was the, uh, <laughs> oh, the tavern. We'll get to the tavern soon, Mark. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> just one hour later. Just send him some, uh, just some, some soothing spores of some kind. I don't really have a power like that, but you know, it's well, uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a pacifying spore on you that's just low effect. It's, <laughs> it's just a numbing just, agent. Just really. calming you down, <laughs> making you feel okay. Well, you don't feel like there's any danger going down this path anyway, because after the point where you pass by where the Megapede was, you still see the body there. It's it's fucking dead. There's <laughs> there's nothing else going on with this thing. Uh, you walk past it. Uh, all the torches on the side of the wall are actually lit. So uh, this thing was the only thing that was blocking the path. You exit out of the mouth, and it looks like a giant quarry where there's a city built alongside the quarry itself. Uh, it spirals down almost into like a small cone funnel-like area, and there's a giant temple in the middle of it. It looks like a temple that kind of turns into a statue that looks like it's holding up the ceiling. It's of a dwarf holding a warhammer on one side, and he's holding up the ceiling of the wall uh, with the other. That's pretty strong. That's a neat... A, a neat statue. Uh, there are some uh, lit up gemstones that kind of like wrap around the entire city. Like, there's no fucking way you can go anywhere in the city without seeing one of the gemstones that's lit up. And these are probably the things that the guys on the surface told you about. That the Geode Coalition has some sort of like deal with putting these things together. So they look like they're generating power for most of the city. Well, first and foremost, we are going to try to find our way to the Brimstone Dragon, I believe it was. Okay. Uh, you head towards the gates of the town, the uh, mostly just uh, Swivelblin and uh, dwarves at this point. There are a couple of drow that kind of just like walk along the side of the wall. Uh, you get to the gate, the uh, dwarves kind of like look up to you. Hi, welcome to... Oh, you're from the surface then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Your poor boys over there look like shit. Yeah. Uh, Hi. We were, uh, <laughs> were expecting to uh, meet some friends at the uh, Brimstone Dragon, I believe. Well, we did have a couple of surface dwellers come this way, lad. What, what, what'd they look like, if you don't mind me asking? I will just describe the largest, uh, you know, they're, they're, they had a giant purple three horns, probably unconscious. With oh, the them. giant dragon lady. Yeah, yeah, they, uh... Ah, right, your drow friend and your uh, cat friend of the feline persuasion, I presume. Drow friend. Want to roll a history check on that? I kind of... Oh, the, nope, never mind, never mind. I know, he disguises himself. Yep, 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 them. I'm going to roll an insight on that. Roll deception. That is a... Four. That's proper. Oh, yeah, 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 them, yeah, yeah. yeah also, proper. real quick, with, with the 15 with the cat, history check, would I have remembered this? Yes. Okay, then he will not go. No, it was. it should have been something else. As long as you got above ten, it would have been fine. All right. Well, he he will not he will not uh, hurt Wake's performance here, at least. Well, unfortunately, this guy is just like kind of squinting at you, just like, "Hi, lad." The, the yeah. Sorry. He, he's a he's a real new addition. Uh, we we normally just traveled with the dragon lady and the uh, cat lady. The persuasion. Okay. That's better. That's a fourteen. There's a nugget of truth in there. No, no. That's why it was persuasion. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. He kind of, like, passes you on on that. He kind of, like, feels like since you are surface dwellers, you probably needed a guide in some way. So not knowing everything will, about the Underdark was probably, like, your, where your mistake came from. Yeah. <laughs> exactly where my mistakes come from all the time. Well, be careful about that, lad. You don't want to be making fun of them knife ears over there. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll do my best to not make fun of their sharp ears. Hiding his own. <laughs> Feeling really self-conscious now. You just like, well, the dwarf kind of like looks over to his other friend and, the, and his other pals in the guard is just like chuckling to himself. Like they're like, this looks like this is just them being jovial fantasy racists. Hecklin, the people yep, of the surface. Well, and, and, anyone anyone and, can take a guess. Like, it, it, there doesn't need to be a history score for that, that, like, elves and dwarves always have a heckle for each other <laughs> in society. It it seems to be no different in Underholland. Well, I've never traveled with both at the same time, so I can't <laughs> say I've ever known. In right, it's very apparent. Yes. 
Uh, That's racist and right. <laughs> well, you uh, so That's pretty much right. special in the alternative part. Of so town. you said you're looking for them. Do you happen to not remember which way they said they were going? Uh, they said they were going to the Brimstone Dragon, I believe. I uh, said they were going to grab a couple of rooms for us and ah, Ulfdar's place. Yeah, really, Ulfdar. Really good, really good lad. He's yeah, uh, met, met his uh, I think cousin back up uh, back up top. Oh, you did. He always was fascinated with the surface he was. Yeah. It's All nice. right then. Well. You just head down that. You just head down the street. Street. Go down four blocks. Make a left, and it'll be the second story uh, building on your right. Second story building on the right. Okay. Down four blocks. You all have a good time now, and uh, get, poor, for God's sake, get these boys some doctors. You know, I was thinking about getting them a healing potion, but something told me no. We will <laughs> get to an inn soon. And hey, it seems we were right. Yeah. Well, you're looking a little pale there, lad. You. You need something to lift your spirit. Oh, he always looks like that. Don't worry. It's more the blood part that I'm worried about. <laughs> oh, all right then. Off you go. So you guys head to the Brimstone uh, Dragon. We do. I, I take it. I take note of any of the uh, other establishments we walk by on the way. Okay. Any shops or perception. Anything. Okay. Hell yeah. Oh, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Everyone can do this. Sure, that's a 19 on my end. I would say stop rolling that dice. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a timeout. <laughs> yes, that seems like an evil Is that another one. nat one? Yes, it was. That dice is a timeout. Absolutely. Time Jesus. <laughs> well, that's why I got spares. Every, okay. every fucking orifice is pouring blood at this point. <laughs> your eye, yeah, you can't see anything through the curtain of blood in your eyes. It's like a fucking, it's the point of view when you have like 5 HP in Doom. Oh, God. <laughs> it is. Uh, I had gotten a nat 20 on that search. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm seeing some shit. All right. Chroma well, Kill is omnipresent. In the, dist in the district you're in, this looks like just a basic marketplace. Uh, a lot of the build, there's actually buildings that uh, tower on top of each other, and they're just like layers of departments of all kinds of different shops that are using gemstones and other kinds of ore. Like these are some materials you've never seen before. Uh, these shops are so big that some of them actually reach to almost near the top. Like they're up to the where the elbow is in the statue. Look at that. Notice how they build their buildings far much upward. I, I don't know if it's just because we have so much space to work up with and walls to build along, but... Probably just because it'd be a pain in the ass to carve out all of this. Probably. If they want to go any further. Mm. Yeah, it's all like, like, wherever the building is, there's a stretch of wall or some kind of natural stone that keeps it as support. Hey, Chromagill, you see any places that work specifically, like, with animal bits and stuff? Because I have a whole lot of animal parts I need to sell. Uh, with that nat 20... You could probably find like a general store or, uh, what, what was your number you got before? I got a 19. A 19? Uh, so with that, uh, you were told that the Megapede is a creature that eats raw ore. And there's a lot of people around here who are coal miners and like folks that like, like to dig. Maybe finding someone who's actually a part of the, of uh, the, uh, miner society might actually find this news fascinating that that might actually net you a reward if you presented it to them. Well, unfortunately, we don't really have any proof of killing it anymore. I did leave it with the... I mean, the corpse is still there. That's true. So at least we have something to say, hey, that was us. check it out. Uh, Look how banged up our guys are, in case you're curious. Yeah, well, with that... Morgan, don't heal yet! I need you as proof! <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, so... You could probably find one of the miners or some kind of association, and if you tell them about that, there's probably a reward in it for you. All right. Uh, I was mostly concerned about, like, the umpteen billion hunks of different creatures I've been collecting. <laughs> oh, with that, uh, you can probably find a curiosity shop. Maybe a magic shop will probably take that stuff in. All right. Especially if you have stuff from the surface and stuff that's rare and not from down here. They're probably going to, like, pay out the balls for that, but you don't know what the currency is yet here. Hey. I'm, I'm assuming that there must be some sort of cross currency. <laughs> mm. uh, there's a general store. There's a weapon store. There, basically, everything that you would need is somewhere in this vicinity. Okay. You're pretty much in like the the shopping district area. It pretty much opens up with this. You're going deeper uh, across the wall. Uh, you see more of the mine shaft. So that looks like there's more industry. Uh, there's industry that ebbs down into the hole. And then there's, like, a religious little sect in the middle where the statue is, where the temple is. So it probably goes from where you are, market, industrial, that kind of loops around, resident, and then, like, a religious district. Right. 
So you follow the directions over to the... We head to the tavern, I think, still. Tavern, first and foremost, we we are probably in dire need of a long rest. <laughs> yeah, everyone's kind of, like, all, like, you guys are all fucking strange, except for you, Chromagill. Everyone's just like, whoa, that's a really fucking wide mic it in. Hello! It's so fat! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> I'm glad you noticed! Well, people are just, like, confused as to why a mic it is walking around in society. They're, like, they're not afraid of you. They're just like, huh. That's weird. How about that? They're more concerned about you. You look like an elf, but you don't have the makeup of an elf. You look like something that you would let... You look like a more colorful blind cave fish to them. You know, the first time in a very long while, I'm feeling like I should have dressed the way I usually dress when I go to public. Huh. They're more taking this as a business expense. Yeah. They're all like, they're looking at you like... Uh, sir, would you like would you like some gemstone? Like they're all like trying to peddle you like. Stuff. You're not from around here. Would you like some of our wares? Would I yeah. like some gemstones? Oh God, it's Cancun <laughs> all over again. <laughs> Come yeah, on. Yeah, they they are showing off a lot of those uh, crystals you actually saw over by the uh, the Swivel Blint House. Oh. They're showing you like all those all that stuff. Like there's some toys that like are made of crystal. There's uh, utilities. Like there's some pickaxes that are laced in with that crystal like uh, material. Like, every aspect of this entire society has a crystal in it in some way. Whether it's used as magical means, decorative means, crystals are very, very heavily used in society here. Right. That's, th thank you for the offer. Uh, just, I'll, I'll be back. I'll just, shit, we'll, we'll be there in a sec. Just, oh, it's just that it. dwarf dragging his feet around. Stop it, you daft bastard! Ah. <laughs> <sighs> I don't even know that I can be heard off mic, but... <laughs> Those damn tech drawer dwarfs. No, it just... No, it, it's lets... fine. <laughs> All right, All cool. Right. It's it's old man Jenkins working on his anvil. Uh, so you guys head over to the Brimstone Dragon. Uh, the first floor, uh, before you go up the flight of stairs, underneath it, actually looks like it's a magic shop. Oh, well. Uh, stop above, by here a little later. Above it is a tavern, but it does it does look like there's a lot of folks who are jeering and like looking down below. As you walk past, I need everyone to roll me a perception check. Doo -doo -doo. 13. 17. Uh, 14. All right, so basically all of you are hearing this. Like you you don't need to it's hard to not eavesdrop on a conversation when it comes to dwarves and swivelblin cuz they're really loud. Uh there, there's a couple of folks who are sitting out, like smoking on pi uh, smoking on uh, pipes and uh, having a beer or something, and they're all just talking about how uh, the geodes are getting all kinds of weird. And ever since they shut down the mines, that everyone's been asking them and not the miners for any information uh, as to like what they're gonna do about their dwindling energy supply. And they're all blaming, like, magic on it more than they are, like, just the fact that their jobs are kind of put on halt. Mm. Sounds like this halt has been around for quite some time. Well, sounds rough for the economy. <laughs> you would think that. But, I mean, uh, they're all still enjoying beers, so yeah, yeah, no, they're doing all right. No, they're complaining about that, but you wouldn't think that with how everyone's, like, actually buying stuff. Like, the market looks healthy. There's no one, like, there's no paupers on the street. There's people peddling stuff, sure, but this looks like a thriving city. It doesn't look like there's anything wrong with the power supply. Wow. What a... We take note of that. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you head inside. Head into the tavern. Uh... You don't see Valtara. You do like it's easy to spot people with all like the stout dwarves and 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 uh and Swivelblin walking around. So it's not hard to see Micha and uh, Micha standing next to a drow sit over by the bar and speaking with a very large, uh, very large and very stout uh, individual. He is a dwarf. Uh, his he looks very different from everyone else. His skin is a little bit lighter. Like, he has a little bit of, like, a shade to it because of where he's un he's underground. But it does remind you of, like, the same haircut, the same sort of, like, coloration of the beard, which is, like, that kind of blondish, but it's a little bit more red than blonde. Uh, he looks like your, uh, your, your captain friend from up on the surface. That must be Ulfdar. Ah, Voltara, Sagrin. Walk in, waving. I wrote his fake De name down. Devil, ah. Devil Grin turns and looks to you. 
Ah, yes, there's the rest of our companions. See, I told... He looks over to what you assume is Ulftar. See, I told you there was a fish man walking around with them. Ah, you did, you, you thieving little bastard. He hands him five bucks and, like, hands him another drink. Yep. That, that's me. I've gotten my things back from the from the funglets. They seem to be pretty happy about the whole Megapede sol- solution. We got that figured out. Megapede. Oh yes. Ulftar turns and looks to you. We were. Ah, tra- you gave him. Ah, you gave him spores. Perfect. Wait, yeah, I was about to say like we'll we'll just say for the argument's sake. Just Absolutely. walk into a room, instantly sneeze. Yeah. Just got a constant cloud of them within like maybe five or six feet. So if I walk up to you, it's like why? You get it. Yes, we uh we eliminated the megapede. It was uh I had been charged with uh well they told me it had been murder, but apparently the person had been fine. Uh, but they they had asked that in uh in recompense for harming one of their members of society, thanks to some rageapede venom that I'd gotten into my system. Uh, they asked me to deal with the megapede. Me and my friends here, we gathered our strength, and lo and behold, we did it. If you you if you go back a little ways, you'll see its corpse. Its corpse is just sitting there along with a very very broken hand axe. And we left the head with the with the funglet folk. He like grabs you. He like grabs you from like the shoulder pad and like leans you oh. in. You best tell that to the miners as quickly as possible, lad. They'll be very happy to hear that, and you'll get a lots of gold for it. Oh well, I would hate to miss out on that. That said, I am kind of sore from my travels, as are my friends. We were hoping perhaps we could get some rest while we're here. Oh well, if you don't mind, then this is kind of very important news. The fact that you took care of a. A problem that only gets cropped up maybe a few days ago, and all intents and purposes, we thought the bastard was still hanging around inside the quarry. Turns out he was over by the entrance. Yeah. If we you, couldn't find him before. If you just look over, I kind of direct them the, where, well, they, where they, we they left the, the body. Yeah, he's just like, well, if you want to stay here, I'll let, I'll let you stay on, uh, I'll let you stay at, at, in the inn for a night. Let you get some rest, because Lord knows that a lot of you look beat up, and your uh, Valtara is in pretty bad shape too. So she's getting some rest. If uh, if you'd like to, you would obviously know who to contact and who this news would be most important to 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 get to quickest. If if you want to tell them that we're here, if they have reward for us, but if you need to get that news to people quick, I'm sure you people have. Aye, he like he like pats his nose and looks to you and gives you a wink. Stands up, wobbles himself on top of the bar. And, like, screams out to everyone, You hear that, lads? The mine's back open! Everyone in the entire bar erupts into ruckus, holding their drinks out to you. Uh, You're welcome! All right. <laughs> Just give a very friendly wave. Yeah, everyone here looks like they're pretty ecstatic about that. The You're mega wel- feed was a jerk, but we got him! It died real bad. It bled silver. In fact, it's probably still gushing out of its corpse. He ripped his head off. I did. With my own two hands, no less. You're getting a lot of people oogling at this point. They're like, they're coming up to you drunkenly asking you questions. There You're are welcome. a bunch of drows and a bunch, uh, not drows, uh, there's a bunch of uh, dwarves and swivel blink coming up to you. Just like looking to all of you as like your heroes, but then they notice that like you are all banged up. At, out of sympathy, they're like, Oh, he looks like he's gotten to a tussle with one. Here you go, lad. They hand you a mug. Thank you. <laughs> Refill that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Hand sir. you one. Hand you one. Meech has got one, so she's fine. All right. Clank. <laughs> to the dead megapede. Oh, megapede! Yes, everyone. <laughs> Check out this cool trick I can do. He's going to start drink. Or he's going to put his hand in as if drinking. Look, I can talk while I'm drinking things. Apparently, that's difficult for other races. Persuasion. Oh, no, performance <laughs> checks. 19. Nice. Hella performing this. <laughs> Slurping with my fingers straw. And Every- see, I can talk just fine. Yeah, everyone's watching like your wrist is undulating. Was, like it's actually undulate taking, just it's, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... That seems weird to some folks, but then out of nowhere you see a gnome just like get up on the table. Chug, chug, chug. <laughs> Everyone else joins in. They pull out a keg just for you. I put in two fingers. <laughs> Roll con save. <laughs> Don't mind if I... Eight. <laughs> Look at him go. Oh, wait, 14. Sorry, forgot I have a... 14? Sizable constitution. Yeah, I was about to say. I was about to say. That seems like, come weird. Come on, man. You're a big boy. Yeah. You guys... This, like, the moment you take in this drink, it feels like whatever, like, 
whatever pain you had is numbed to the point that you don't feel, you do not feel pain whatsoever. We mm. drank until we can't feel Felix. <laughs> <laughs> the, this li- the 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 liquid that you drink kind of feels like it's it's kind of filling in the void where like any flesh or any like injury is taking place. It it does feel magical. There is some kind of arcane energy going through this brew that you're drinking. Alcohol, the best way to fill that void in your heart. Uh, so with that, Nature's you guys definitely do not feel pain anymore. So if you were to drink this in whole, uh, maybe not up to Chromagill standards, but <laughs> if you drank enough of this stuff, uh, I want everyone here to roll me an Arcana check. Sixteen. Modify twenty. Uh, just a nine. This stuff is so potent that if you drank enough of it to feel the intoxicating effects of it, you would resist all physical damage for four hours. I've got a fucking keg, man. <laughs> Another. <laughs> for how many hours? Four hours. We're going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying for now, going forward, like if you were to drink this thing and actually get inebriated off so, it, you would uh, So our, our drunken I'm also master down style. To HP, thank you very much. <laughs> so, so if I had chosen to be a drunken master monk, this would be my brew of choice. <laughs> Pretty much. Which, you know what? Funny enough, I actually did a point for that. And uh, there was a. Uh, Shel- if you actually talked to Sheldon about what the brew he drank, he would have said something about a dwarven brew that came from underground. Oh, there you mm-hmm. go. And this would have been it. Nice. See? It's all connected. <laughs> it's all a big world. It's folks. all intertwined together. It's, Cosmology. It's a universe. <laughs> Cinematic, even. <laughs> all right, so you guys get go get a room, get some well-deserved rest. <laughs> get uh, a room. Just walk in, <laughs> face down. I guess we can take a break here. How's that? We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the table. We got a night's rest. Yep. I, got, I got my key points back. I'm awake. And Alive. I'm awake. No, yeah, you're yeah. you're the wake. I'm the wake. All right. So you guys found it a little difficult to try to go to sleep to all the ruckus of all the dwarves just like yelling and screaming the other night. Celebrating. But, well, you don't even know what time it is at this point. For all you know, it could be day, it could be night. Uh, you being underground kind of has shifted your perception of like what time of day it was. That's kind of the unfortunate side effects of being under uh, in Underhollum. Yeah, I mean, we haven't been down here for a whole lot of time yet, so at the very least our internal clocks are <laughs> ticking. Maybe but... somewhat there. Uh, if you want to roll a survival check, you could probably uh, catch up on how long you've been down here. Uh, with a modified 20. I think I know how long we've been here, potentially. Better than what I got. Roughly. So take it. Uh, your internal clock tells you that you've probably been down here after eight hours of rest. It's probably like 1 a.m. the next day from when you first came down here. All right. <laughs> Still middle of the night out there, but whatever, I'll deal. I've been nocturnal before. I think we all been there. I have the energy to, to work now, should we need to. Yep. You're uh, you're all pretty much patched up. Everyone's gotten a full night's rest. Uh, you head downstairs. Like, there's a bunch of. There's still the bar's still rip roaring and going. Like, there's a lot of activity. But uh, now that you guys have told everyone that uh, the Megapede has been killed, there's actually not that many folks here. It's just that a lot of folks that are here are just rowdy. Uh, there is way more space. A lot of the folks who apparently were miners. All uh, in a bar. In a bar, I know, right? <laughs> I know. I opened myself up for that one. Uh, People who mine. Yeah, the uh, the, <laughs> the 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 miners of the miners all left at this point. There, uh, they went over to like see if anything can be done of them getting back to work at this point because they've been kind of stuck out there because of the megapede. Ulfdar <laughs> is uh, waiting at the bar for the rest of you. Uh, Devil Grin has, or Seguin at this point, uh, has been in conversation with Ulfdar for this entire time. Apparently, he knows who he is, uh, in this form anyway. Uh, Seguin kind of just, like, motioned you guys to come sit at the bar. Wave and go over. Chromagill approaches. Uh, Misha, he tells you, uh, he tells you that Misha has been down here before. Uh, she got 
uh, with a little bit of help from the dwarves, they got Valtara upstairs to take uh, take a little bit of rest. She's still laying down. She's recovering right now. Maybe a couple of, maybe in a couple more hours, she'll be back on her feet. Uh, the poison has to get out of her system naturally before she can, uh, you know, stand back up again and like actually get some motor control. Makes sense. Uh, Micha, after taking care of her for most of the night, she went off to go to sleep. So it's just you guys and Devil Grin at the bar at this time. All right. Well, while we're waiting for them, I got some stuff I need to uh, see if I can sell to that magic shop downstairs. So a lot of uh, can't help but uh, be quite uh, kind of curious. What's a bunch of surface dwellers like you heading down here in Colas? Well, uh, funny enough, we're here on a uh, bit of a favor to a, I guess, an elder fay, looking for uh, a drow. You know, uh, but this drow's a, a bit strange. They have, uh... Well, aren't they all? Oh. No prop, no pr- uh, no offense, Segwin. Segwin, <laughs> Devil Grinch is sitting there. Yeah, yeah but maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe a little stranger than normal. You know, uh, this one has very odd eyes. Uh, from what I've heard, they, uh, they might glow a little bit. Maybe look like, uh, look like some sort of galaxy of sorts, and, uh, they, uh... May or may not banish things from reality when he looks at stuff. Mm. They also s- seem to be patrolled by some some tough-looking guards. Had reports that uh, they might have come through here, actually. Maybe a few days ago. I mean, cycles, whatever you would call it. Do you have a universal way to tell time down here? Up on the surface, we have the sun. It's usually a pretty good indicator. I know what the sun is. But I'm just... Look, I've had he, them. He like, he like he chuckles at you. <laughs> I've met a lot of people down here who didn't. <laughs> I we don't use the sun down here. We usually use the uh, we do use cycles. Yes, the bioluminescence of the mushrooms glow a certain way. When they reach a certain peak, that's when we can tell it's midnight. Well, that's uh, <clears throat> so a few cycles ago he might have come through this way is what we uh, what we came to understand. I haven't heard anything about uh, any mythical drow or whatnot. Usually the folks down below are strange enough as it is. I'm sure you've noticed that we have we have a, a magic shop underneath us. They're part of the Geode Coalition. Right. We're not really too fond of them, but there's not a lot of space for jobs here and there. And unfortunately, all the miners need a place to go. Well, that makes, you know, it makes sense. I'm just surprised that with this being, you know, happening bar the way it is that some rumor might not have crossed by about oh no, such I don't company know. traveling through. I didn't I didn't catch anything about a, a drow with sparkly eyes that makes people vanish like a like some kind of weird might have ghost. Had, might have had like a blindfold on, I think is how it was described to us. But I do remember hearing something about uh, some folks wanting to find their way down to Dimswell who were uh, read the scale of a dragon, something yeah. molten. Yeah, yeah. We're looking for uh, those folk. Mm. Well, Said they were heading down to Dimswell. Well, I would tell you not to head down that way as best you can, but I don't want to seem that kind of a person, being that one of them standing right here. Hiya! The mushrooms down there are uh, a bit strange. Look over at Chromagill. How strange. Hmm. I don't know about the mic that you were saying before that you've uh, met just before you came in here, lad, but they've been known to having people get lost out in the middle of the woods and be eaten by the elements. Hmm. And the only way to get to Dimswell is once you get off the road and head into the woods, you have to cross through the woods to get to it. Of course. It's like a very dangerous place to go to. How many people travel that way? Not a lot. There's a few adventurers here and there who want to go see that grand library of theirs. Yeah, there's a there's a boy we met on the surface who clearly makes the journey every now and again, although he might travel through the water. Oh, you're talking about them weird squishy folk that actually own the library, do you? Yeah, yeah. I think we met their uh, their leader's kid up top. I do not have his name written down. Petraeus. Petraeus. I, I don't know much about his name, but I know his father is a uh, old weird sort that is 
very particular about what gets in the library and what uh, most of his folks uh, tend to trade on. He does ask uh, Colas for protection sometimes, but protection from what? We have no idea. Their folks are uh, oddly docile. Hmm. Like, very trustingly docile, way more than usual. Way more than any other race needs to be. And they're the neighbors dwarf, with these prankster Mykonids? I have I mean, no I idea. Guess that, I guess that's a good filtration system to make sure what gets in there is... Mm, I suppose. I guess they used the cover of that. These, uh, these creatures that live in the water, I believe they were called the Malu or something? The Malu that live there, they, uh... They're very, very chummy with the knife ears. Again, looks over at Seguin. Seguin pays no mind. That uh, makes uh. Hmm. Though, I hope that's as far as you plan on going. You don't want to go past the caverns, then. Unless you want to get, unless you want to get a touch of the madness. Well, not as far as we're aware. Madness, though. Oh, that's right. You're from the surface. You wouldn't know of this. That you is... see, yes. Maybe about eighty or so years ago, there used to be a drow civilization down here, just below the caverns. Heard a little about that earlier, actually. Mm, yes. Uh, let me get the name for you here. Uh, Jebavul. Uh, Jebavul. Yep. J-E-V hyphen V-A-V-U-L. Yep. It used to be a... It used to be where all the drow uh, used to converge before going up to the surface to the, uh, to the elven kingdom. Uh, but something happened, like, the dwarves have no idea, they keep to their own business, and most of the people in Colas keep to their own, but they do know that there are adventurers that come down to Underhollum to try and, like, plunder the city, though it's probably not a good idea because there are, uh, quite a few oddities in there. Whatever creatures that haven't just made a new home in the ruins of the city, uh, you're sure to find a cluster of driders with some kind of disease almost akin to Mad Cow. Mad Cow Spider-Man. All right, we'll do our best not to go there. Hopefully that's not where our quarry is. Their disease... Well, your quarry, if you're calling it that... I mean, it's would have had what to we're through, looking for. Would have had to gone through Haxorus Caves, which is where a lot of the folks that live down near the Lava City are. And is that between here and the... Oh, that'd be between... That'd be between Jevavul and, uh, and Dimswell. So there's no have... there's no way that any of the uh, drider that have this madness could get through the caverns because the light and the heat is so disastrous for them that even for anyone from Colas, you need some heavy-duty fire resistance to even get through Haxorus Caves. Okay, so now what I'm hearing is we need to go through that mushroom forest. To get to Dimswell. To get to Dimswell, but it sounds like that Haxorus is between Jevavul and Dimswell. No, yes. no, no, it's... Colas, Dimswell, Haxor's Caverns, into Jebavul. Ah, yeah. okay. On the other is, side. Jebavul is the, the elven city that we've heard about, but currently have no need to go to. Yes. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you for this information. This will help us make it much easier to communicate when people tell us where things are. Mm. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here that he could possibly give you. There is a path. Uh, there is a path. He doesn't know it. Unfortunately, uh, Ulfdar doesn't know the path. But there is a safe path that leads into the forest that goes through it that could get you to Dimswell. Okay. Where it is, he has no idea. Do you know who might know? Seguin kind of just like lifts up his drink. Ah, well, perfect. We hired the right man. Ah, uh, he's a good one, this lad. He is. A little. A little strange sometimes, always coming back with some weird oddities from the surface, but I guess that's the life of an adventurer, just like the rest of you. Yep, just like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. I just like finding out about new places. It's so, so fascinating just to learn how different things work, like you people without the sun. I can't imagine working like that, but it's great. It works for you. I mean, it could work for you too, lad. I mean, your kind don't technically need the sun all that often. You just need somewhere dark, damp, and moist. True, but it does provide nourishment to the things on which we feed. So, you know, it's kind of a circle of life kind of thing. Eh, I ain't no druid. 
I wouldn't expect you to understand. It's quite all right. Mm. Just like how I don't understand how you're able to drink with your fingers. Yeah, well, I can kind of... I choose to drink with the finger. Really, most of my skin would absorb liquids. Ol- kind, kind Ulfdar of, kind of like rubs his beard. Kind of a very absorbent fellow. Puts an elbow in his glass. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be molded that way for like a day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <it's> stuck. <laughs> Thunk. Uh. Okay. So with that, you got a little bit of information. Unless there's anything else you want to talk about, talk about with Ulfdar, you you're just waiting on everyone else to get their full day's rest at this point. Mm-hmm. So pretty much shopping trip or gather information. I just wanted to go down to the uh, magic shop because I have a bunch of hooked horror chunks and various other bits and bobs. Okay. Chroma Gill will at least go down there with you. Don't know if he's going to buy anything, but... Morgan? Same. Same? All right. Might so everyone's going to head downstairs into the magic shop just to check it out. Chroma Gill doesn't have anything specifically he <laughs> needs to do, so he'll just travel with the group. through the door. Do you buy monster bits? It's completely dark in here. Nothing's happening. You see a bunch of uh, shrunken heads all <laughs> along the wall as they're looking at you as you enter. Hello? I have things! <laughs> Fuck, that's good. Dude, hello? Uh, or, or did I cut? Is it, ki- is it late here? The door. It's, it's, uh, you kick through the door. The, uh, <laughs> hey! Yeah, the shrunken heads, they all look like uh, drow and uh, dwarven heads as they turn and look to you. Oh, hi. They don't say anything. They got their Dude. mouths sewn shut. Do yep. they run oh, the okay. shop? Um, I don't it know. looks like there's an open space you can walk into, but walking in, it's pure darkness. I walk in. Do, do, do. Door shuts. <laughs> ah, boy. Hmm. I'm just holding monster bits over my head. <laughs> you wa- like there, you guys are in there too. Yeah. I assume. Yeah. The it's cramped uh, space. The shrunken heads. You watch as little embers appear out of their eyes, and then they open their mouths with a weird crackling noise. It's almost like hearing a peanut shell crack. Ugh. And then a crystal pops out, and light appears. I come back later. Very theatrical. No, this looks like it's this looks like it's just a nice little way yeah. to do this. Uh, the lights uh, illuminate the place for you. You are now standing in what looks like a uh, a very large open middle space. There are books and potions all laid off to the left side. There's a glass counter with a whole bunch of doodads and potions on uh, display. This uh, glass. Uh, this glass display kind of like curves around in a U shape. Uh, there's more magical weapons and stabs in the front, a- in the center part, and on the right part, actually looks like uh, living familiars in cages. Oh. Like there's a pseudo dragon sitting in one of them. There's a uh, there looks like there's a sleeping fairy in one of them, and there also looks like there's a sleeping snake with looks like devil horns coming out of it. I lift Scaffy out of the pouch of my hood. Look, Scaffy, you have friends. The snake sits up and takes an S pose looking at Scaffy. Scaffy. Ah, oh, all right. Uh, so no one's behind the counter just yet, but uh, you are welcome to look at any of these walls if you want to find something in particular or find something interesting. I'm just going to wander around, look at things. I'm, I'm mostly here just to sell off my monster bits, but... You know, let's see. Let's see what catches our eyes at the very least. Okay. Uh, center, left or right? Uh, I will look toward the animals. All right. There's a lot of feed here. This looks like it's sort of like a weird subsect of a pet shop. Uh, in the in the front of you, actually, it looks like there's weird little cubes that uh are sitting on display. But what's weird about them is that there's the metal bit of the cube, and then there's a weird bit of flesh on the inside of them. Almost like the inside of a D6, the middle part is where the flesh bit is. Gross. Uh, it's It looks like it's breathing. I, I, I reach out a finger towards it. You touch it, it rattles. An eye appears. Hmm. Does I wave back. Know how to speak celestial? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear like this weird angelic hum or some kind of like, oh, yeah, like, like it's, it's, it's like cousin it's, it. 
<laughs> a little bit. It's more like it's a, it's like a weird hymn, but like it's a little more growly than that. Uh, a mouth appears on the other side of the D6, and two arms spread out on the side as it stands up and looks at you huh. and tries to tries to communicate with you. Not a lot, but just a little bit. I just wave. Waves back at you. It stand. It gets up off its pedestal and just waddles its way over towards the center. Um. Knocks on a bell. Oh, oh, vi- oh! I'm sorry, visitors. I'll be with you all in a second. I, I, I was sleeping. I apologize. No, no, it's fine. I, I don't really know what time it is down here, so it's uh, no, no trouble. Sorry to wake you. No, no, please. The, the, you're, you're here to shop, so by all means. If there's anything else special while I prep, you want, you wish to have, well, by all means, start looking. Well, uh, actually, I was wondering if I could interest you in some uh, potential ingredients for potions or spells, whatnot. Oh, I'd be more than willing to do that. I'm, I'll just like I said, I'll be with you in a moment. You see a hand kind of like wave out of the, uh, the center door. Sure, no, no problem. Uh, now that you the bell has been rung, all the pets or all the familiars are now like awake and in the cages, and now looking out towards you. Uh, there are a few small figurines kind of displayed next to where that weird little box thing was. You want to roll a history check to see if you know what that thing was? With disadvantage. Oh, with disadvantage. I was going to say, that was actually pretty all right. It's the same fucking roll. Okay, 15. 15? I got a six. Oh. Let's see. Six and... Six. Hey! Everybody's getting the six. We're all six. Six. Yeah. six. Witching hour. And 15. Um, you've heard stories from your uh, tales of uh, the Ashdrakes, of uh, small mechanical creatures that act as watchers to the, uh, for Celestials known as Modrons. Huh. So that's what a Modron is. I mean, I've, I've heard them described before in my novels. I never thought they'd look like that. They always seemed, I don't know, bigger? But maybe that's just how I imagine things when people tell me stories. Oh, their their sizes like can vary. They they could be spherical. They could be large. They could be small. Most of them are small, though. Huh? Yeah, those those are the ones that I read about. I've just heard travelers tell me about them every so often, but not now, very now often. Now, with its uh, with its task of like waking up its master done, it kind of like waddles back to the podium and sits back down. Bye. And like shrinks its flesh back into itself. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. Uh, anything you guys want to look at? Uh, you said there were potions. Right. potions? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll take the third thing with what he is not looking Stabs. at. The, the stabs? Yep. That what it was? So you're at the center. You're at the left. Yes. All right. Uh, roll an investigation check. Also, you know what? You go ahead as well for me. Yeah. Since you're okay. looking at now, the now I'm looking at the Ooh, aminals. Yeah. 16. 16? Mm-hmm. 13. 16 as well. God damn. All right. Let's start with you then first. Okay. Uh, so you're looking over at the potions. Uh, so it's a giant display case that opens up by itself. Like it looks like some kind of like weird mage hand kind of just lifted the doors open, and you watch as the hand theatrically just goes to the potion sitting before you. A lot of it are healing potions. A lot of it looks like it's uh, average, like little boosters. Like some of them are enhanced ability potions. Mm-hmm. Probably for stuff for the folks that work here, the most like the miners and whatnot, if they need a little enhancement booster. Uh, is there anything in particular that you're looking for, potion-wise? Just healing potions. Just healing? Okay, yeah. If you're looking for healing, there are common potions, which any human, like any basic person can pick up. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a medium potion and a superior potion, which is a giant vial that looks like it has wings sticking out of it. A fragile. It's made out of the. It's made out of the gemstones you saw at the house. Maybe fragile. Gently hold it. And yeah. Walk over to the counter. All right. Cool. Uh, so for you, apart from the Modrin, which was probably the more exciting thing that you saw out of that whole bit. I'd never seen one before. <laughs> uh, you do notice that there is a bloater fish sitting in one of the cages. I 
can't just kick that one. I look down. I, I, I lean down towards it. In Aquan. Hey. Poke, poke, tap, tap, tap the glass. It's in a cage. You could poke oh. your finger and touch it. Hello? It looks like there's entropy inside of its mouth. Entro- like as like, in like just in pure void. chaos? Pure chaos. Like a swirling void is in its mouth. Interesting. I'm going to... Do you stick your finger inside the void? <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Not on a first date. <laughs> oh, God. We just met. It doesn't... It, like, it looks like swirling <laughs> it's chaos. It's inviting when, you. When you, when you, like... When you look into... when you Do you peer into What it? happens when you finger the swirling chaos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you peer uh, into the void, or do you... Uh, yes, I, I stare into the void. What stares back? Nothing, but what it does remind you of... It's a void. Uh, you remember on your travels a lot of uh, bags of holding. It almost has the same kind of inclination of looking inside of a bag of holding. Is this oh, I fish literally here? just got something sort of like that. Is it a bloater fish of holding? I'm going to... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, you know what? I've been carrying around this little tiny trophy. This the Wake's first hunting trophy, a little squid beak. I'm just gonna like flick it into the opening there. Drink. It floats in the air, swirls, enters inside of its mouth, and you watch as from the middle of it disappears from sight. But can wow. he give it back? That's the real question. Can I have it back? Use the form. Use the force. Choose the form. Oh. Uh. How about a knife? <laughs> a bone knife pops out. <laughs> hmm. I, I I look at the craftsmanship. <laughs> it's masterwork. It's a plus one bone knife. Oh my god, it's a transmutation fish. Uh-huh. <laughs> How much for the fish? Oh, which which fish, son? I have quite a few to spare. Do you look over to the side? There's actually like a little aquarium of blind cave fish. Uh, the bloater fish. Bloater? Is that what they're called? Ooh, you. How do you know that? I have been around. He pop like specifically the ocean. He watches a a female gnome kind of just like peeks her head out and notices you. Oh, your surface dwell. Oh, I'm quite sorry. I'll be with you in a moment. Yes, the, the fish is quite a uh, prized possession of mine. I was casting a little bit of magic with it, and I found some way to create it, uh, make, to make it, I guess, useful. Well, I mean, they're essentially immortal, so. They. She's just like. She, like she's just like. All I should giddy stop about this. giving away <laughs> free information on this thing I'm trying to buy. She's just all giddy about this. Uh, you were looking at the stabs. I was looking yes. at the stabs, yeah. Uh, and I got a. a 15, I think, when I rolled? Oh, man. 14. You know 14, yes. That sounds closer to correct. Sure. Uh, you got a 14. There are stabs. Uh, are you looking for something that you are capable of using, considering that you're a warden? Uh, he's, he's just kind of just more window shopping, just looking at stuff. He's like, that looks neat, just seeing if anything catches his eye specifically. Okay. Uh, you do catch that there is a, uh, <laughs> there is a staff that's covered in bioluminescent mushrooms. Oh, this looks like a fancy piece. Oh, by the way, they took away your. Oh, they took away my cap. Yeah. My red cap club. Oh, I was gonna bust. This that one look. This one moment. looks like it though. It looks like it, but it looks way more. Uh, it looks way more uh, slim than the great club. It doesn't look like a club. It looks like, it looks just like a staff. Staff. Uh, there is that. However, underneath it, it actually looks like there's a cloak that is wrapped around it. Almost like it is a cloak. It's not like it's a little curtain. Mm-hmm. It's a cloak that has a little bit of like uh, the same kind of like build that your cap's like a roof cap, uh, kind of like growing off the edges of it down the bottom of it. So it is encased in some kind of fungal form. And underneath that is a book with the face of a Mycanid on it. Um, e- excuse me, what's this, uh, what's this Mycanid book here? The what? Myconomicon. <laughs> oh, it's a spell book for uh, all sorts of plant matter in the Underdark. 
You don't say. Uh, I, I've, I've performed a, a spell here or there. What, what kind of, would you say, like, base level knowledge is required for these kinds of incantations? Oh, well, um, anyone who is a druid or anyone who has any capabilities of a growing wizard might be able to use them. Hot diggity dog, druid sounds right up my alley. I picked that ca catchphrase up from the surface. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so all of that looks like it's a set for a wizard. Uh, for some kind of, like, for some kind of fungal, uh, use. What, uh, what, what would this set here cost? Kind of just points at it. Oh, well, we'd have to refit it for you, of course, so the price would have to fluctuate with it. Oh, by the way, you've all been given a reward from Ulfdar for the Megapede. Oh, so, cool. So everyone here is getting 2,500 gold. Oh. Nice. I was just getting ready to say, Chromagill has no gold, so I'm excited to see how he tries to barter for yeah, this. Yeah, so every, everyone pretty much got a reward of 2,500. I'm sorry I keep forgetting about that. I didn't hey, no write words. that down here. <laughs> Just a bag of gold there <laughs> in the morning. Oh! <laughs> you did the you did Colas a great service. They actually didn't know where the creature was, and you guys just happened to be at the right place at and the right now time. Now it's fucking dead. Yep. Uh, You're welcome. They are actually willing to uh another part of your reward was actually them offering you a uh a gemstone filled of its uh molten ore. So you could have something that is used as an alchemic property, or even a light source for a out of a small crystal. That sounds useful. We'll deal with that when we get back, though. Well, each of you get. get ah, one of him. okay. All right, so uh, we'll start with you since we uh, since she gets out. You're near her mm -hmm. more than anyone else. How much? Oh, for the healing potion. Mm -hmm. I have more of these. This is only the display model. I have about five of these at the ready, and this will cost you at least 400 apiece. 400 apiece. Fancy potion. It is, I believe, superior. Uh, it's here. Yep, superior healing potion is 8d4 plus 8. Holy shit. That'll heal a lot. You know, I think I might only need the one. All right, sir. Here you are. She, she's The glass is bigger than her. Here you go. Oh, thank you. And uh, you, sir, you were here the longest. I apologize. No worries. Uh, I mean, I guess we've all been here the same time, but uh, I have some stuff for you, and I'm looking at this little friend here. I'm just kind of like waving my fingers at him. <laughs> yeah, he's adorable. <laughs> oh, uh, I've been calling that one uh, Stupid Kevin. <laughs> Stupid Kevin. I've heard le Wait a minute. I know you, I think. You know stupid Greg. I know stupid Greg. Never mind. You might be related. <laughs> Is that a stupid name? <laughs> stupid Greg. <laughs> uh, so. How much is stupid Kevin? Oh, well, parting ways with stupid Kevin. Are you, uh... <laughs> He's stupid expensive, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking We're hell. We're about to find out. <laughs> well, I, I have to ask, considering that he is a living creature, uh... Uh, what magical attunement are you going to be using him for? What it, what it will be his purpose? Well, it seems right now he's used to uh, hold oh. <laughs> and or transmute objects. Ah, uh, okay. Very astute of you. See, most of the folks here are uh, of the more lowbrow community, and they, uh, they only see a creature and think it's evil. I mostly get a lot of jeers from most of the miners around here. So having someone know what transmutation is is a welcome sight. I've been around and have read a lot of books about vampires. She holds up an asterisk book. Yes! <laughs> is that the new edition? Volume five. Oh my god. <laughs> I've read one through four like seven times. Probably you'll just not just <laughs> no, we'll, 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 big nerds, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll you, get, I'll get take, to that later. You take it. I have like seven copies. I have an autographed volume one. You what? I have an autographed volume one. I mean, not by, you know. They're I adorable, mean, it, it's, aren't they? <laughs> I got, a, I got a autographed check. by might anyway. Persuasion check. With advantage. Because I'm not lying. Doesn't matter. I'm geeking out too much. Uh, that is a five. <laughs> 
sure you have. She gets back to the task at hand. That would have helped you lower the price a little bit. Oh, it's, you, 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 she got an eight, so not by all much. Right. Uh, all right, so she will sell you the transmutation bloater fish familiar. Stupid Kevin. She will sell you stupid Kevin for 15 hundo. Done. I am buying stupid Kevin. Also, you said you had a few more of those... Big old healing potions? Oh, yes. Well, considering that he just bought one of them, I have four left. 400 apiece. All right, let's see. 1,500. One hurt. 1,600. Yeah, done. It is 84 plus eight. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good deal. All right, she'll take that. And uh, you said you had stuff to sell. Oh, yeah. So we can try to add this to the bargain here. I'm just going to write down 1,500 plus 1,600. I'll do the math later. Until then, I still have this much. Okay, so uh, I have a few things for you. Some things that are probably pretty common for you. Uh, I have a hooked horror eye, one of their beaks, two pounds of their scales. Oh, well, it, it, you, you have the pieces, but the condition is what I'm looking for. Oh, well, the eye is immaculate. Ooh, very nice. Same with the beak. The scales kind of have a little bit of wear and tear on some of them. And uh, the, I also have the carapace of a giant centipede. There was your proof, by the way. <laughs> oh, that, that wasn't from the megapede. That was just oh. from one of the me- one of the uh, other centipedes. Yeah, one of the other centipedes that we oh, murdered. Well, I could use this quite often. I actually, uh, they're very. Uh, these shells are actually very u- uh, useful for endurance spells. Hmm. Okay. Uh, how much would you think these underdark monster pieces would be worth to you? Oh well, the underdark stuff, the centipede stuff, I could. You can find your backyard, but... Probably 50. 50 gold? Yes. Now, the hook horror stuff, though, an immaculate eye like this... Mm, I can make a sen- I can make this into a sending stone of some kind. Wow. That sounds impressive and beyond my scope. Hmm. 400. All right, now I move on to... Surface thing. Ooh! I pull out the bottle of jungle miasma that I've been holding on to. Oh, wow. That takes me back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to roll something real quick for that, because you've been holding on to that for quite some time. <laughs> it might have turned into a liquid. It yeah, yeah, yeah. It no. itself, but... For quite some time, though, so... 68. Uh, a third of it is liquid. Most of it is still fog. This fog came from a massive... Uh, I mean, you, you know those lava toads out there, right? Yeah. Well, on the surface, we have them, but they're just regular frogs. But this one was huge, and it exuded all of this stuff from its back. It was the familiar of a dead grudge witch. A very powerful one, too. It Almost was killed them. Awful. Persuasion check. I, I nearly died. I miss you, Dagon. You could say, talk to do people. You, do you want my help? You can do assist, yeah. Oh, assistance. I also. He concurs. Yeah. Uh, that's better. Uh, 15. 15? Okay. Uh, she's quite interested in that. She doesn't know what she could do with any hexed items, but it'll probably, if distilled properly, this could probably be used as some kind of like prank for children. I would not make it a prank for children. This stuff was actually very dangerous. Well, distilled. Gotcha. Like, like very down to its basic element. It could be used as some kind of, like, hex spell for kids. (laughs) That still sounds very dangerous. (laughs) Curse your neighbors! This stuff killed a lot of people. this anthrax! (laughs) She'll find some use out of it. She'll probably take it out of your hands for 150 gold. (laughs) What have you done? (laughs) You know what? Just to see what happens to the children down here. (laughs) God. Local cultless youths found dead after. <laughs> and I'm the lawful neutral one. Uh, I am neutral good, sir. Or, no, find... chaotic good. Hey, listen. She will find some way to make this work. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Right, Roughhouse. You're going to need to wrong. test this stuff pretty heavily. It's uh... Of course. Okay. Let's make I it would sure. lose my license if I did this unethically. Good to know that, you... good to know that you're certified. I'm Sorry. like our doctor. 
deleting all this stuff from my inventory. I guess you don't want heals, Morgan. 550. <laughs> Mitra kind of just like puts the syringe away. <sighs> Worth it. All right, so that brings our running total to 2,550 gold. Nice. Hmm. You probably can buy yourself some like magic equipment and shit too. With that I kind am of I am magic equipped out, if I am to be honest. <laughs> yeah. You are only allowed to attune three magical items on you equipped per person. Yeah. Does the fish count as it is a entity? It counts as its own entity. It does not count as okay. a magical piece of equipment. Hmm. Yeah, because that's the way I've been treating the uh that's the way I've been treating the mimics as well. Yeah. Still got Kevin here with me. Now we got stupid Kevin. <laughs> yeah, we got Kevin and stupid Kevin. Don't feed Kevin to stupid Kevin. Yeah. Actually, no, that's a really legit idea. Don't do that, because that might actually open up a fucking hole in space-time. And also, don't feed stupid Kevin to Kevin. Both of them can see yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad choices, no matter who you feed Kevin or stupid Kevin to. Which, no matter which Kevin feeds, we all die. Yo, and I can see that some people in the audience right now are just like, man, Zito's got it out for this Kevin guy. I don't know a Kevin. <laughs> I don't know a Kevin whatsoever. Uh, but if I did, he'd be really stupid! <laughs> Kevin, my friend from Ohio, I hope you're doing well if you're watching this. <laughs> I believe you just graduated. Now I get Way to, to go. add <laughs> stupid <laughs> Kevin to my inventory. I'm going to go look at the familiar shelf. Sure. <laughs> we'll just hold off on that for I a know, second. Just, just, just go. All right. Sold and sold. Oh, hold on. Do you have anything else that you want to sell? Uh... <coughs> I think those are the most, uh... All right, I do have one perfect ruby. That's probably very useful to somebody like you. Mm. Uh, she can probably use it as an agent for spells or even use it, as, uh, enchant it to be a part of a necklace or something for you. It's also a really perfect ruby. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, whatever you get will be a really nice, like, probably not uncommon, but probably a wondrous item. Oh, if she was to make something with it? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> but I think he's just offering, how much will she buy it for? Uh, if she, if you just want to give her the straight up ruby, uh, she doesn't know how to gauge it, but she can give you a piece of, like, she can trade you something for it. Oh. Uh, I'll store credit. I will, I will look around at their jewelry department in a second here. <laughs> yeah. Once you, we you see what Chromagill finds with his staves. Yeah, you pretty much have store credit with this purchase here. All right. Uh, I present the, the the mushroomy staff, cloak, and book, which were seemingly being sold as a set. Okay. I've, I've, I've dabbled in magic, though not a significant amount. I wouldn't consider my a wizard by any means, but I am a druid, so I'm sure there's something in here for me. Uh, there might be a few spells in here that could be useful to you. Uh, you probably won't be able to get the full shebang out of this book, because it is for a wizard. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cloak, however, you could probably get something out of it. Uh, the cloak will have to be adjusted to you, which will be a part of the, uh, money situation. It adds a plus five to stealth when worn. Holy crap. But it's that. only, it only is active for an hour. And still, uh, stealth is not a strong suit of a big mushroom, man, so. It pretty much Having makes a little mushroom ghillie suit. <laughs> wearing it and activating it transforms you into a mound of mushrooms. Like, indiscernible, uh, indistinguishable from, like, anything else. Mm -hmm. It's like the Fortnite bush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the book might have a couple of spells that would be useful to you. What they are, you are unable to discern at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll probably be able to get maybe three out of the six spells that are in the book as of current. Okay. Uh, what about the staff? Do I have really any use for that? The staff? Uh, any magical ability that... Uh, any magical ability that you have that has something to do with nature, uh, if it deals all of them, <laughs> if it deals damage, you get to add uh, while holding this staff and using it as an arcane focus. Uh, so if you're if you change out anything to focus with this attack, so mm -hmm. pretty much have it in your hand, don't have anything else, and cast your spell while holding on to it. Anything you uh, use, any attack that deals damage adds a 1d8 acid damage. Oh, wow. oh okay. That does sound useful. I'm guessing the rest of it's treated as a quarter staff in terms of damage. Yes. 
It is treated as a quarter staff. That's one d six. It's versatile, meaning you can move that up to a d eight if you want to use two hands. Oh, okie dokie. And you can use it considering that you are yeah, a warden. I, I, yeah, I can. This I can has use no this metal stuff. components on it whatsoever. Excelente. Uh, the entire set with adjustment will probably rub you around three grand. Hmm. Well, perhaps with my light pockets, I can maybe interest you in a kind of trade. Well, she's always open to finding any surface dwelling stuff. Although she's not sure what you can offer considering that you're a mic it, but she doesn't know that you're not from the surface. Yeah. That said, Chromagill uh, kind of has a tendency to not keep things, so... <laughs> uh, you know what? Probably won't need this too much. Shows her this wax weld leather. Now this leather, uh, from what I understand, has the ability to basically repel any sort of water or liquid that's being splashed on it, preventing any sort of damage or, or constant, you know, if, if someone splashes you with something dangerous other than maybe lava, which I know might actually happen this deep into the earth. Uh, that might be the one thing this wax weld wouldn't really deflect as much. Persuasion with advantage. But any other liquid, by all means, nat 20 will be great. Quite the sales pitch from the traveling <laughs> mushroom man. She actually like looks over to uh, one of the familiars. She like waves her fingers and the door opens up. You watch as the serpent kind of like the horns unfurl into wings and it flies over, coils itself down on top of the table, looks down at the, uh, at the leather that you present to her. Yeah. Throws up lava. The lava falls off the wax weld leather with no problem. Didn't even melt the wax weld. Wow. She she takes her hand again and wisps it so the lava doesn't touch the floor, and the snake eats it back. Gross. Spicy vomit. You may have the entire set with this for two thousand. You have yourself a deal, ma'am. Makes the trade. Yep. So you now have all that gear. Uh, she's going to, it's going to take like maybe an hour or so, but she's going to attune it to you. So once the sale's done, she'll attune it to you. Okay. So it's going to be a really fucking huge cloak now. It's big, like a, big ass cloak. It's like a cape. Big book yeah. and staff. Uh, so. I went to the familiar shelf. Okay. Because I am curious. Uh, are you looking for anything in particular? The creature, well, you just watched the snake fucking yeah, through I up saw lava. That. The one other creature, the Modrin, is there. It's a celestial creature. Celestial, and then we have that one. And now you have stupid Kevin. I got him. I'm tying a string around his tail so that he can hang on, so he can travel with me. It's kind of, I, 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 Morgan's kind of doing like that animal shelter thing where it's like, which, who's calling out to me? What's that? Animal handling. Animal handling. It's a wisdom thingy. It's not bad. A 14. The pseudo dragon takes notice to you. Hmm. Uh, it is a weird light blue pale uh, pseudo dragon. Hmm. Probably about the size of your forearm. Hmm. Um, what's the story with the uh, pseudo dragon, madam? Oh, that one's actually... Uh, one of the last of the entire litter that I had, there were ice, uh, they were ice pseudo dragons. Hmm. So you have like a little, it would be a little uh, searching familiar that accustomed to you, it pretty much like can deliver some ice damage if uh, it attacks enemies. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much a little ice pseudo dragon. Hmm. How much? Uh, it would cost 1500 mm -hmm. for the pseudo dragon itself. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to buy it feed, which is pretty much ten bucks worth of rations. Mm -hmm. You have a deal. All right. How many uh, bits of rations do you uh, want for the pseudo dragon? You said ten. Yep. So let me just do some quick math here, because I'm at twenty-two eighty minus the fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Math is fun, kids. I have this big fucking axe, a giant club, and now I've got a staff, the crossbow on my arm. I'm wearing a cloak over all of it that have mushrooms on the back. I have a decked out man. I already said Wake looks like Gilgamesh. He's got uh, <laughs> he's got a sword at his side, his staff on his back, 
Oh, he doesn't have his hand axe anymore, but... Sorry. So you said 10 gold. <laughs> Bandolier uh, of ration. knives. Yep. Let's do... Let's do an oh, and gold. 100 gold worth of rations, so an even 10 <coughs> rations. Okay. You good? Yes. Okay. I'm just punching my water bottle. <laughs> All right. Great. That works. It drops me to 680 in total. All right, cool. She, uh, she lets you have the pseudo dragon. The pseudo dragon kind of just like scurries out of its uh, scurries out of its cage, looks to you. She kind of like waves her hand over to you to present that like you are now owned by it. Uh, you now own this creature. Mm-hmm. Uh, roll an animal handling check. Okay, let me just write down my new gold total real quick for housekeeping's sake. New animal handling. Thirteen. Thirteen. All right. It's very hesitant at first, but then it like kind of like latches onto your arm and just looks up at you with like li- a lazy like one eye blink, then the other one follows. And then like its tongue kind of like lashes out and licks its eye. You pretty much got like the equivalency of like what are those flabby geckos, like the light brown ones, not crested geckos. Yes. You pretty much have a, cre- a light blue crested gecko with wigs. Precious. Hmm. I'll, I need to come up with a name for you. Well, before you do, sir, you might want this. She hands you a small ring. So long as you, yep, so long as you wear it, it, uh, it will absolutely know that it, it is owned by you. Like, it has the same crest of the, uh, the same crest on the ring. It's actually branded on the foot of the creature. Ow. Cool. Hmm. So, so long as you wear it, it will definitively act on your behalf. If you do, if you don't wear that ring, it's going to. Uh, it, you're gonna have to do an animal handling check until it gets used to you. Mm. Noted. Great. This ring is a, a an obedience shortcut. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right, and uh, with that, if anyone else wants to buy anything else, I've spent most of my money, so I'll probably be I'll done s- spending for a little bit. I'll just do a quick investigation check since I'm looking at the jewelry, see if anything pops out at me. Uh, investigation, that's an 18. 18? There are three necklaces that are on uh, that are available. Uh, one of them actually looks like a hand holding onto a heart, and the heart is the gemstone, like the shape of a human heart. Okay. Hey, uh, what's the deal with this? Oh, this one is a charm that... Uh, keeps the undead away from you. Oh. Uh, a lot of folks actually tend to use those when they try to enter into, uh, oh, those poor bastards, into Jebavul. Wow. A lot of clerics usually pick these up and believe that Vecker will be on their side if they wear it. <laughs> <clears throat> she looks to you. I already have a, uh, uh, what, what, what were the other ones? Uh, the other one, uh, looks or like... The other one, actually, funny enough, if you looked at uh, if you looked at Devil Grim when he was out of his drow form, from the front, it looks like the silhouette of one of the Drakari heads. And this one? Oh, this is a designed to be that of an ancient spirit of a lava dragon, a sort of ancient race that used to live down below in the Underdark. What's its deal? It's, uh, it's a very protective gem. It'll make your skin harden. It's plus one AC. How much? That'll be 800. Uh, With the trade of the ruby? Uh, With the trade, you can mark that down to 500. Done, I will take that necklace of protection. Yep. Which of you needs HP? (laughs) Or AC? Well, health. Oh, right. I mean, how much HP do you guys have? Like, have we healed or no? No, no. no like, which, which of you needs my, what's our, like, what's my maximum? Max? My maximum is fifty-four. Forty-four. All right. Uh, which of you gets more in direct combat? Probably me. I yeah. would assume. I tend to be the. I walk over to Chroma Gill and I, you know, I, I, I put on the dragon necklace so I can start attuning, and I take off my old uh, necklace that I got from Eloy. This was a uh, gift from a, a dear friend of mine. I think it'll serve you better than it will me right now, though, Chromagill. 
It'll Looks take, at, it'll take 24 hours to attune to you, but after it does, you will get uh, more. 10 temporary hit points that refill on a short rest, or a long rest. He kind of loops it around as best he can with a, with a, with a necklace on I, his, I help you clasp his, it. his body. <laughs> well, that's pleasant, wait. Yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> pleasant. Your gift from a good friend has just become my gift from a good friend. Oh. oh. <laughs> Can you see what dragon? In a few hours, <laughs> you'll see my eyes smiling. <laughs> the Modron. Just AC. everyone in the room, even the shrunken heads. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the shrunken heads. Oh. <laughs> All right. And uh, I think that'll be everything. There is one more uh, necklace there, too. I made my choice. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to style. afford anything, so. <laughs> All right. Well... Unless there's anything else you guys want to buy, because pretty much it's just like prepping yourselves up for getting ready to get out mm -hmm. of the city. I think we can pretty much stop here. All right. Really? Well, I think we got our shopping trip done. Mm -hmm. Got all that handled. But before we go. Indeed we, we do. We got some fan art to look at, baby. <gasps> fan art time. Fan art time. <laughs> We're getting there. There and, we are. And on the next episode, we will make our way over to Dimswell. Hell yeah. Ooh. Getting stuff adjusted so that we can... Setting up a camera angle real quick, yeah, like... Yeah, I apologize. Hold on a moment. Well, it's, it's okay. While, while, we're, uh, while we're setting this up, you know, it's a good time to check out sharkrobot.com slash team-4-star <gasps> where you can get shirts like the one I've been wearing all night. Oh, man. Classic. Oh, man. With Final Fantasy VII Remake coming out soon, now's a great oh, time yeah. to join Avalanche. That's right. Booyaka. All right. I am ready whenever anyone else is. All right, well... Looks like, yeah, we need to move that monitor out of the way, I think, although that's... Also the shot. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Let's do this. All right. That, oh. I don't think that works much. Just going to crop it up. Don't, don't worry about it. I, I am sorry to the editor of this. No, he's got it. He's figuring it out. Look at that. Okay. Now we're now digging I'm all along off. the bottom. Don't worry about it. Don't look at it. I'm, I'm looking. I mean, I... We're looking at the screen to know where we can look. Making some odd choices here. Nah, it's gonna be fine. There and we we're go. back where we began. Hey! <laughs> Either way, you can see us. Excellent. Whatever the trick I'm trying to do isn't working. Yes. <laughs> He's doing his best to adjust on the fly. All right. All right. First up. First up. Picture. Hey, here's some from last week. Nice. Hey. Yes, from our uh, episode <laughs> last week. Welcome to New Atlantis, Florida, from Seto Sister. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's weird and warm. That, I'm so long. <laughs> There's a gator smoking. That's what they do. He's just hanging out, man. Well, you know, I just kind of like summoned one out of a fucking piping system. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. You had just the thing for I that. Had I had just, just the thing. Yeah, just the thing. You just happened to summon an alligator. It was perfect. It bit onto a demon. It was uh, great. For those that missed the episode, I, I was really happy with how it came out. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, who, who is this by again? Sorry. Uh, Seto Sister. Sister. Thank you so much. Thank you kindly, Seto. Uh, next up, uh, this is a work in progress. Oh, man. This is, oh, the name's cut off. I'm sorry. Call of the Imp is the name of the artist, and this is work in progress of Ezra, King of the Frogs, <laughs> based on based on a play of the old Akira cover. Nice, I love That's it. Great. Don't mind me with my frog crown skull. I am the king here. <laughs> I didn't vote for him. You don't vote for king. <laughs> we're, a, we're a commune. <laughs> not anymore. You're not just. All right. Up. <laughs> Good stuff. I love it. Thank you so much. Next up. Oh, man. Uh, Ooh. From, haunting. From Lord of the Trees, Natural Wonders, Old and New. Love the series. Can't wait to see what happens next. I love Chromagill up there. Just kind of popping out of the side. Oh, but... hey. I am also here. I'm going to kill a giant uh, centipede. Don't mind me. Dagon, a lot of this was probably my fault. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Ezra just poking his head up over on the other side. I just realized I i think my characters looks, are mirroring each other. He looks haunted. I'm, die, I'm dead. We're in horrible pain. <laughs> I just love Wake's face with all that. She's like, <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> this is this is everything I have to encompass now. going to be fine. okay, I guess. I'm, I'm okay. This is this is fine. You know what? No you, you pick up and you move on from where you left off. You're like a darkest I... dungeon character there for a second. 
The darkness seeks into his heart. Slowly, <laughs> gently, about to break. <laughs> but always turning, turning. All right. Thank you so I much. Love- Good stuff. Uh, these next two pieces are from the same person. Nice. Ooh, these hey. are uh, metal... Uh, yeah, yeah these metal carvings. Metal carvings uh, from Midnight Reads. Get ready for this long name. Kit 48041268 on Twitter. Nice. Oh, nice. yeah. Uh, besides the fact his beard reminds me of a dragon gym leader from Black and White, I think Morgan <laughs> Silhouette. <laughs> oh, my came, God, it does. I think Morgan Silhouette came out pretty okay. I do wish I had a better camera to pick like up the smaller angry details. Santa Claus. <laughs> the lighting looks <laughs> cooler in person. Naughty. And uh, for Wakes. Five times. I did this piece five times oh, before I got it right. One got broken by my cat. Three, I, oh, mess- no. I messed up near the end and ruined it. I hope to God the final one looks good. Wake's hair was super fun to do. Oh, that's fantastic. Dope. I love it. They that's are great. Spiky oh, listen, yeah. good listen. Stuff. This is fantastic. This Hell is great. Yeah. I love it. I, awesome. But then awesome. again, but then again, I also remember that artists are their own worst enemy when it comes to modesty. Oh, oh yeah. So, yeah. like... You, it, it, that's just how we have to deal, man. Look, but a, lo- it, you did a, lot a lot of, good of work. effort and skill went into this. And yes. A lot of time took to hone that skill, and that is awesome. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Next up. Sega X. Whoa. Hey, Agent Nedra. Yep, last session made me want to draw Secret Agent Nedra. Hell Agent, yeah. do I have permission to punch? <laughs> man, it's a little sparkly nut. She was there. Uh, Wait, by the, wouldn't uh, she be the demon? Uh, well, here's the thing. Like, when I asked you guys to give me your favorite, like, you know, man in black like character, Hellboy was totally acceptable. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah. All, right. All right. I hadn't even well, thought about that. Now I know what to do going forward. <laughs> uh, who was this by? by this way? is uh, Ziga Exeron. Ziga Exeron. Thank you. Awesome stuff. I love it. And finally, from Handcraft Art. Ooh. Oh, boy. First time using this Twitter thing. This is a hand engraving on a copper plate yeah, of Mary wow. Pibbs. Wow. I use the original That Art Jack as a baseline. When yes. I do a print, yes, this is for printing. That's why it is mirrored. I can make a better photo. That is awesome. That looks really cool. So this is, a, like, this, you, this is you, a you what's like coming. A, yeah, you take like a like a little pin needle, in, or not a, you know, you take like one of those, uh, what, what is that, like a nail all? Where you like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you flip that. Beca- oh, there. <laughs> I think other way. Lots of flipping. That, that, was, a, that was a vertical flip. That was wrong. He's talking. I'm talking. <laughs> I'm tra- talking. We're talking. So it's like with like a little nail thing? Yeah, or it's, a, yeah, like it's a small nail you pin through. Ding, there we ding, go. Ding. That's awesome. There you go. Now it's, now it's unflipped. Yeah, because yeah. I, at first I thought this was like the Japanese like wood block. I thought it was printing. wood too, but then I read it off. I'm like, oh shit, wait, no, that's copper. copper. That's metal. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Really cool. Good stuff. stuff. like that Holy is shit. always a plus for me. I love that sort of stuff. A unique take on the yeah. fan art. Anything that requires, like, hand-eye coordination and that amount of pre- S- precision. Speaking I'm just, from a shit. guy who used to take a little bit of blacksmithing back in college. Nice. The things you can major in. <laughs> <laughs> eh, it's a, it was an art like school. a legit thing. That's one of those Metal things that you have to, like, yeah. That's one of those things that if you're good at it, you have a very select skill that not a lot of people have. It's man, if you watch Man at Arms, are so expensive. <laughs> man, have you watched Man at Arms? Hell yeah. Oh hell yeah! Oh fuck I, yeah! I used to watch that all the time. That's the good shit, mm-hmm. and that's everything. Awesome. awesome stuff. Well, thank you so much for all the wonderful art. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you guys next time at the table. Bye bye. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>